Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Security Guard Command. Hey, so just the other day I was talking with a, a security guard that was uh, visiting a patient in the hospital and he asked me a question that kind of made me take pause and I, I didn't have an immediate answer for him. And his question was, what is your typical day like working security in a hospital? Uh, and I and I thought that question would have been an easy question to answer, but the truth of the matter is there is no such thing as a typical day in a hospital. There are just different kinds of days. Um, so, and, and what I mean by that is today, for example, was hectic. It was it was just downright crazy. One thing after another happened. Um, started off the day, the first, I'd say, couple hours went pretty smooth. And um, everything was just flowing. It was clicking. Everything was great. And then it just went to hell. Um, started off with a GSW walking in. A GSW is a gunshot wound. And uh, this guy walks in, and he's kind of disoriented a little bit. And um, I look down his foot and I see I see his foot, got blood come out of his foot. I ask him, hey, what's going on? He goes, I need to see a doctor. I'm like, okay, what happened? And he goes, I don't really want to talk about it. I'm like, all right. I look down his foot and I see a hole in his foot and I see blood gushing out. Um, I said, okay, go check in right over there. So he checks in and I, I already know. I look at it, I go, that's, I'm 98% sure that's a gunshot wound. So I call my supervisor to inform them. Um, we have a whole process that the whole emergency room goes on lockdown so that um, if it is, if it does happen to be gang related or, or what have you, if there's somebody that, that is involved in this shooting, wants to finish the job, that we take extra precautions to prevent them from getting into the hospital. Um, and so there's that whole process. And this guy got checked in. We ended up going on lockdown. And um, I, I think he, it's my personal opinion based off of my observations that this was a self-inflicted wound. Um, this guy kept trying to put his phone into his pocket and every time he put his phone in his pocket, it slid right out. And you could tell that that was his dominant pocket, like that he stores his phone in. You can tell that's what he, he just naturally puts it in there. But every time he put his phone in his pocket, it slid out. But this guy was in, in shock. And he was so disoriented that he didn't realize that was happening. He just thought he was missing his pocket. I told him, you got a hole in your pocket. And he goes, okay. But he, he it did, still didn't click. And he still kept trying to put his pocket, still kept hitting the floor. Um, and he had a big hole right in his, uh, on his pants, right below where the pocket, where the hole was in the pocket. And he had a, a wound on his leg right where the hole was. And so based off of my observations, I believe that he tried to put a firearm in his pocket and ended up shooting himself. Um, anyway, we had to have PD come. PD has to interview, clear the scene. They ended up doing a transfer. We're not a trauma center, so they have to transfer to a trauma center after the patient is stabilized. Patient tries to run. He, 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 once he's being transferred, I don't know what's going through his mind if he thinks he's going to be arrested or go to jail, but he tried to run, and he uh, ended up punching a hole in a wall on the way out. Ended up getting tackled by uh, EMS and, and personnel and nurses. I showed up immediately after that. Uh, ended up uh, controlling one of his arms. And then once we had a gurney re ready, we uh, picked him up, transferred him to the gurney, and then they ended up strapping him down to the gurney so he couldn't move any, um, any further. Um, no sooner had I pulled my gloves off from that situation, went right into another one. Um, I had... Uh, Sheriff's deputies come into my parking lot, a little hot. They, uh, two units came in, they, uh, they parked. So I step out and I'm, and I'm just watching them. And then they go, they signal to me and they say, Hey, we got a, we've got a extremely aggressive, uh, um, 5150 hold coming in. So I'm like, okay. So I went and I informed the triage nurses. I went and informed my supervisor and informed charge nurse. We're getting ready for the worst case scenario. Turns out this guy is just a lot of noise. He, he's been there before. We're, we're aware of him. But um, he still, it's, it's a, it, he just creates a lot of, lot of work for us. So no sooner did he get checked in 
I get called to assist in another room with another patient who's kicking and screaming, biting and spitting and um, it needs to be restrained. And so I end up having to go and deal with that. Spent probably about 15 minutes with that situation, getting that patient restrained. Um, get done with that one and I go back to my post in the lobby and I've got another guy who's who's a, who's a somewhat of sort of a regular and he's always causing issues always have to have security involved with him when it's time to get him discharged he, he doesn't want to leave and then I had a woman come in telling me all sorts of uh, things that's going on she, she's basically hallucinating she's got visual and auditory hallucinations she hears things that nobody else hears and she sees things that nobody else sees and she's got all kinds of wild stories. And at first, I didn't know that this is what was going on. She comes in with some wild story. And I'm like, oh, really? What? And as, I, as I'm asking qualifying questions to try to figure out what it is that she's talking about, the who, the what, when, and where, I begin to realize that the who, what, when, and where don't match up. The story is got a lot of holes in it. And it's inconsistent. And so... Once I realized that, I'm like, okay, I, I know what we're dealing with here. And then I started to recognize more of the signs of, of possible schizophrenia. So she's not a patient. She's just wanting to inform me of these things going on. She's talking. She's She's got like five different issues going on at the same time. All of them, in her mind, extremely serious. And so so I'm, I'm like, okay, got it. And I'm, I'm pretending like I'm writing everything down just so it looks like, you know, I'm listening to her. And then she takes off. And I'm like, okay, that that problem resolved itself <sighs> on top of that non-stop visitors just the place was busy it was it was crazy it was hopping that is one example of my day working in the emergency room there are days when it's just smooth as glass you, you could you could spend the entire shift in there and all you're doing is just checking in patients once in a while and you don't have any issues whatsoever it's smooth, you go home, and it's fine. That wasn't today, guys. It was it was busy. I am mentally tired. I am uh, drained, and I am, it is my Friday, so I am glad I am going home, and I'm gonna have two days off now, and I'm gonna enjoy it, because I'm tired. <laughs> um, you know, I, you, sometimes you go into a place like a fast food restaurant, and you'll see a worker um, taking orders in the drive-thru, you know, and when he's, when he's filling up drinks, he grabs a cup, he flips the cup in the air, catches it in just the right place, slams a scoop of ice into the cup, throws it onto the grill, hits a button, it fills up, slaps a lid on, and you, and you watch this guy, and it looks like he's doing tricks, you know, he looks like one of those bartenders doing flair, and I worked at a fast food restaurant for, probably about six years, I, I became a manager. I was that guy. I was the guy that had all the tricks. I, I just was extremely comfortable in my job and I was good at it. And, you know, I could whip those cups out, flip them around, have them land perfectly, ice thrown in and just all in one smooth motion. And, uh, you know, I just enjoyed the job. I made fun with it. I, I had fun with my job and, you know, it was, and that's just my nature. I try to have fun with my job as much as possible. And, you know, the first part of my day today was like that. I was, it was just smooth. Everything was just clicking. Um, you know, I just felt like, Hey, this is great, you know? And then it went to hell. That's fine. That's the job. That's what happens. I get it. Um, it was just draining. Anyway, hospital security guys is, is a different beast. It is not <clears throat> your average security post. There are so many things that happen on your shift from day to day. So many different things. It is not like anything I have ever worked before. I mean, I've worked at a Costco parking lot, guarding the parking lot, occasionally being called into the warehouse when there was an issue they needed help with. But for the most part, I was outside on the, either the patio or in the parking lot. And that was busy. I mean, that was nonstop dealing with people um, there's a, there's a certain level of entitlement with Costco members that kind of comes with that membership territory. And 
and, and we always joke, um, you, you, you get these people, and you take that scene from Dumb and Dumber where he's about to go run off to chase the chase the jet, and, he, and they try to stop him, and he whips out his badge and goes, it's okay, I'm a limo driver. And then he goes running out the jetway, and then the guy looks out the window and sees him. He sees him uh, just flip right off the end of the jetway and land on the tarmac. And because uh, the plane's gone, it already disembarked and it's gone. And so, when you work at Costco or or membership place like that, you get a lot of people that kind of try to whip out that badge, you know, uh, that proverbial badge, and say it's okay, I'm a Costco member, and it's as if that makes it okay for them to to, you know to misbehave and do things that they normally shouldn't be doing. Um, I've even had people try to camp out in the parking lot because they're a Costco member. So, you know, very busy post, but even that post, which was literally from the moment I started my shift to the ended nonstop dealing with, with issues and people, the hospital is just a completely different ball game. Um, is it worth it? It, it, it really depends on the person and the guard. Um, you see a lot of things. You see a lot of bad things from time to time. Yes, it can be very rewarding. Um, you do meet a lot of people. You do end up helping a lot of people. A lot of people will thank you for the job you're doing, but a lot of people will hate you for the job you're doing, and they will make sure that you know that they hate you. They will give you problems. Um, so it's it's a mix. It's a mix of of of, of things. But the job in and of itself, you know, very rewarding, especially when you when you help people and they're appreciative of it and they make sure to tell you um, that that is the best. That is probably one of the best parts of this job is just, you know, when when they come to you and say thank you and stay safe. It, it's really appreciated. They they recognize that I have I have visitors who watch me work while they're waiting and they'll make comments goes, man, you've got a tough job. And I just look at him and I'm like, you have no idea. It, this, th- There are things that go on that you don't see. And I don't tell them that, but I just say, yeah, it can, it can get that way. And um, I smile at him and, you know, but if you're thinking about getting into hospital security, just know that you will be doing things in security that you normally would not be doing at any other post. It is... Um, it is a hands-on job, at least with in-house. I've talked to some secure, some uh, allied universal uh, security guards that have worked at hospitals, and they said it's it's not the same. Um, that it, that they don't go hands-on. That it's it's you know, and that's allied. But in the hospital, you know, when somebody is threatening uh, threatening the staff, you know, or they're actually an actual threat, or they're being disruptive, or they're being uh, um, violent. We, as in-house hospital security, we go hands-on. We make sure that we stop that threat and and deal with it. We have to go through a process, make sure that they're if that if they are a patient, that they um, get discharged properly, so we can remove them from the property. Um, but I would say, at least <clears throat> on a on a good week where not a lot happens for that week, I'd say maybe two times go two or three times we go hands-on on a bad week it could be every day a couple times a day um and it really depends but it is it is a very physical job when you talk about getting your steps in um on average i would say it's you can get anywhere from fifteen thousand to forty thousand steps in in one shift um i've tried to do steps and count them with an app but my phone um doesn't read them right and I've counted 100 steps and my phone says I did 5,000 but I've had other people who have actually counted steps and it gets up there it, so guys hospital security is a completely different animal and very rewarding the pay is good you got benefits most of the time uh, the only thing is is that it has its downsides it has its stresses it has its traumas that you'll go through you'll see things that you know they're not pleasant. You'll see death. You'll see trauma. You'll see injuries. Um, you'll you'll deal with uh, distraught family who just lost a loved one. The hardest ones are when somebody loses a child. Um, it's it's it is really hard to deal with. 
So it's 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 you know it's it's got its good and bad, but you know I honestly I enjoy this job. I like this job. It is dangerous though. Um, you're dealing with violent people quite often, and so you know that's again going back to some of the bad sides. You've got to be careful. You got to be on top of it. You got to be aware. Um, your situational awareness has to be on point and you know I mean it, you just got to be careful um, no weapons allowed at least in the hospital um, we have a guard outside they don't allow weapons outside either in that, that position but we're also in-house so um, carrying a firearm or anything else not allowed under BSIS because we are proprietary um, now it could be a different story if they were just if they decided to go with a contracted guard for outside patrols they might they might be able to do that but then again um, they're pretty anti firearm or anti 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 gun so um, I doubt that they will ever even have an armed guard on the outside but, but who knows things could change um, but in this case here I mean there, there are some risks it is it is dangerous and um, even Sean has commented on on some of his videos over at the security and investigations leadership channel about uh, he did a video just a couple weeks ago about how dangerous hospital security is and um and, and i have to agree with him it is it is dangerous I've, I've experienced a lot of things you know and i've been very very fortunate to not get hurt i've, I've had a busted lip i've been been punched in the mouth um so i've had a busted lip but um so fortunately, I have not sustained any um, other injuries uh, during these altercations that I have with people. Um, and, you know, I've gotten to the point where when I have a, an altercation with somebody, um, I, uh, I, feel, I go into this mode where I feel like I'm in slow-mo. And literally, I feel like I'm watching a John Wick movie in slow motion. And it's probably because... Um, after a while, you develop muscle memory on these maneuvers and these tactics that you use for self-defense and for, um, you know, stopping a threat. And so now it's, it, it's just second nature. And so I feel like I'm just watching it replay, even though it's happening in real time. Um, kind of weird, kind of, kind of, uh, kind of cool at the same time. But, um, yeah, you, you get, you just tend to kind of go second nature. You, you really start to uh, you you can predict and know um, when somebody's about to attack you or attack somebody else. You, you you get these pre-attack indicators, and your mind just picks up on it subconsciously, and you just know right away when something's about to happen. So, yeah, great experience, guys. If you're trying to get into law enforcement or corrections, working at a hospital is a great place to get the experience and the training. And uh, you know, looks good on the resume. So anyway. I'm just about home, guys. Um, so I'm gonna sign off for now. As always, guys, I want you to uh, to be careful, stay safe, keep your eyes open, practice your situ situational awareness, hone in on that skill because that skill is so critical to keeping yourself safe um, and being aware of threats before they become uh, too close to you. So, as always, guys, stay safe out there. I will catch you later.